Good morning, everyone. How are you doing today? It's really interesting. Five years ago, I was just coming to the United States as a refugee, and this was my first convention. So I'm very happy to be here again with... Uh, and, and I don't know if you remember me, one year afterwards, I was giving a speech in Salt Lake. I mean, there's so much change since then. I start my own organization. I get more fat. I get 50 pounds, living the American dream. <laughs> I mean, you guys, your burgers are pretty fatty, huh? Like, it's, I was like eating falafels every day. Now I'm eating burgers and steak. And now, like, isn't that the American dream is all about, right? Like, drinking beer and... Um, and uh, I unfortunately, I converted Scientology. That since then. <laughs> um, on, a, on a serious note, maybe I should not do a serious note, but uh, the speaker here today is one of the uh, one of many places that, unfortunately, atheists get uh, persecuted to death. I mean, there are multiple countries from Afghanistan to Iran to Malaysia, Maldives, and Saudi Arabia. Unfortunately, our ally, and many others. Um, and as you know, last year, a few Bengali bloggers were killed. But make sure you start a hashtag, all of you, in solidarity with all of the atheists who are constantly being persecuted. And today, one of our speakers is from a neighboring country. I don't know if you guys know geography. I know many Americans don't really. Uh, <laughs> Iraq is not by Mississippi. It's in the Middle East, OK? Just, just, I just want to make sure you guys know that. And he's from a neighboring country of Jordan. He's the founder of uh, Council of Ex-Muslims of Jordan, which is a recent organization as far as I know. And he started the hashtag Atheist Day. And to remind you again of the envelope, there will be an envelope passed, I think, at 1 or 2 a.m., 2 p.m. No, gosh. Uh, after, after the afternoon prayers, if you guys are Muslims, you, should, <laughs> you can go do your prayers. Um, and then after that, there will be an envelope that has a checkbox called International Assistance. So in that way, we can have people like Khadra and many other amazing uh, activists from the Middle East and across South Asia. So thank you very much. I'm just introducing, I'm not giving a talk. I'm giving a talk on Monday at the University of Oklahoma because I'm getting, I'm getting paid there. So that's <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thank you very much. And welcome, Hamad Khadra. Thank you. Our rights shall not be denied anymore. لقد أنشأنا مجلس المسلمين السابق في الأردن لنساعد رفاقنا في موطننا وفي الخارج. We're not insulting the people who come and fight for our Muslims. القانون يعتبر وجودنا وصوتنا مسيئا للمشاعر الدينية. المجتمع ينظر إلينا نظرة دنيوية. إن رسما قد يجعلك هدفا مشروعا القتل. واللوم كل اللوم ليس على قاتلك وإنما عليك وعلى رسمك وصوتك وكتاباتك كل هذا عليه بتغيير. And we are also here to communicate and participate in a worldwide movement against all forms of intolerance and bigotry, to maintain our right of existence, and to show the world that no change will ever be possible by staying silent. إننا نعطي إخواننا في الأردن مساحة للتعبير عن أنفسهم بأمان. من خلال موقعنا الإلكتروني وسنكون يدا فاعلة في إحداث التغيير المرجو في بلادنا للمرأة والطفل لكل من لا يعترف وطننا بوجوده وحقوقه لكل المفكرين الأحرار لكل المؤمنين بالعلم والمنطق For all of you, we stand today This was a message from those still in Jordan, and I believe that their voice should be heard before mine. I'd like to thank our Mr. President for having me here today. When I was back in Jordan two months ago, David was the first person to offer his support for me leaving the country and coming here. He did not ask me to promote American atheists, he, in fact, never suggested that I should mention this while I'm here. 
I wonder how our planet will be if we all can be like him. People how People who ask nothing in return and don't even ask for gratitude for what they do, they do it for the sheer help that they are after. Those who hold the idea that we atheists are one and by being that we create so much change that none of us would be able to achieve if we stood alone. As I watched the attacks on the Twin Towers in 2001, I had only one reaction, happiness. I was just a kid, but I had already enough hate in me to be glad for the deaths among the infidels. Even if I had no idea by that age where on the map Afghanistan is, I couldn't even point New York City or what exactly is Salafism? Those heroes of mine by the time rep represented those jihadists in the war stories we were taught as kids, those who stood with the prophet against the evil Jews and infidels, pagans of all kinds. It was like watching a cartoon I imagined become a reality. And that was enough for me as a kid to be glad for 9-11. In 2011, I was jealous of my classmate for taking a semester off to perform jihad in Syria. Although he came back on a wheelchair, at least he defended the house of Islam, or shall I say Dar al-Islam. The other Dar or house is the lands that do not fall under the control of a majority of Muslims that rule under Sharia. It is Dar al-Harb, or the house of war. By 2012, I was ready to be part of the struggle to bring down that house of war. I dreamt of recreating the Islamic empire to finally have Sharia law rule over man-made laws. God's message was simple and clear. We hold the answer to everything. We have a perfect book and a perfect life example, the Prophet Muhammad. My morality was contained within the, real, the realms of those two, which included my desires to drop homosexuals from rooftops it was justified to me to discipline women. And of course, if we ever bring back that glorious caliphate, there is nothing wrong with enslaving those who we will defeat. To either perform jihad or use my US citizenship to preach Islam in the US, these were my two choices. Later on, I stumbled upon a video of Professor Richard Dawkins explaining evolution, which created something in me that I'm sure those of you who were religious at a point of their lives can relate to. That moment of sudden doubt, of questioning, a moment of thirst to know more and more. I remember how evolution was taught to us in ninth grade, in one page, in one paragraph that was shortly followed by verses of the Quran and how stupid the idea was that men, became, men came to existence out of modern monkeys. I had no idea by the time that there are people like me in the country. Later on, I began to find a few of us online. We created a group and called it the Atheist Community of Jordan, a secret underground one. 
One day, we planned to meet, and we did. 27 atheists showed up, all with their fake names. We didn't know how they look. A woman I thought she was 16 turned out to be in her 40s. <laughs> Seeing each other for the first time was something that brought to me a feeling I can never describe or be able to. And I shall always be proud of myself and those who helped me in creating that meeting because now after five years of that, we are in hundreds and we are growing each day all thanks to that one group and that one small meeting. Being an atheist in the West may mean that you become less bigoted against homosexuals or probably against women too. It might push you stronger on maintaining free speech and a secular country. But there is something more when you become an atheist after being a Muslim. You are one less homophobe. You are a one less man who consider women nearly as chattel. You're one less jihadist. It also means that you become, sadly, a criminal. By laws that range from fines to the death penalty in all Islamic majority countries. And therefore, I became one. But it wasn't just the law in Jordan which can sentence me to three years for blasphemy that I had to consider. I am also charged and trialed under a 1,400 years old godly law that says I have committed the worst of crimes. I have renounced Islam, became an atheist, just like you. And therefore, I have been sentenced to die. In a pool done in 2013, 82% of my country believed that apostates should be put to death, only to be beaten by 86% in Egypt. I will have to carry that sentence for the rest of my life, and I shall always have to feel as if a target marker is pointed on my forehead wherever I choose to live. But I bet this target marker is much more felt by those I sadly left behind me. As selfish as I was, I came here two months ago after five years of having that weight on me. I may or may not forgive myself for doing so, but that is something I will leave for myself to decide. I was still to realize the brutality brought to us by religion when I final, finally had the chance to take away an abused woman from her family home. Noura got in the car with her face shattered by glass and her shoulders so bruised you can barely see her skin. At that time, we had a new family protection agency. We had faith in it. We went there and the first reaction of the police officer who saw her, saw her face, saw her shoulder, was one thing. This girl is wearing a hijab on her ID and she's not wearing a hijab right now. Could you please grab me a hijab so that this woman can cover up? I witnessed the beating of those who dared to drink water during Ramadan in the streets. I saw those messages sent to me that I should be cut to pieces. I still had to read and see and to a certain degree experience how sick and sexually deprived men and women become. I can go on and on, but a colleague of mine sets the bar of how poisonous religion can become. Omar 
a normal college student who smoked and had a girlfriend didn't need more than a few months to be out of the country, go to Iraq, and to Fallujah exactly. Strapped with bombs, he did it. And how much does it take for one to end his life for this faith or whatever faith there is? Not much, apparently. If only you can hold the belief that this life does not matter and once your morality is based on the Quran and the Hadith alone, it is fairly easy to do it. Omar was what I could have been without the video I stumbled upon. Maryam Namazi, a hero of mine, once said, the internet is doing to Islam what the printing pressed into Christianity. I live now as an atheist and a relatively decent man. <laughs> because of that access to information, because of an atheist who decided to be outspoken, or shall I say firebrand. Now as you try to put yourselves in the shoes of the criminal standing before you, I am also an Islamophobe which is new to me, thank you. Although I have been an atheist for five years by now, I only began to, me, to be an Islamophobe a few months ago. When I decided to leave the country I lived in, to go back to my country of birth, or in better terms, deciding to leave the place where I am possibly a criminal, to the place where I am possibly free. In Jordan, I was called many names, an infidel, an animal, a dog, a pig, a worthless man, the Zionist devil worshiper, you name it. But I was never considered an Islamophobe. In countries where there is blasphemy laws, where there is punishment for criticizing the religion of peace, there is no need for de facto blasphemy laws. There is no need for public opinion to silence speech. There is, however, self-censorship. We do it out of fear of machetes and bullets. While here, man's worst fear is being called Nazi on a web page. And while we look for you to speak on behalf of us, to be our voice, while we look for this part of the world and envy you for your freedom to speak, to offend, and even to hate, that voice is becoming low and low. I have met enough people in the West to know by now that your mechanisms are kicking in. You might be feeling a little bit of discomfort by what I'm saying while well, I'm just warming up. <laughs> you may say it's only a misinterpretation of the peaceful religion. You may say it's only a minority within a minority. And you may say that if only we didn't speak ill of something held so dear to people, everything will be fine. All I hear in that is if only we can let religion dictate what we should and should not criticize, speak of, or draw, everything will be okay. Well, let me take your words on it. I will, from this day on, stop being offensive on one condition though, only if I'm not offended myself anymore. See, I am offended by the mutilation of children, whether male or female, and the protection of it as a cultural or religious privacy. <clears throat> I 
I am offended by the ownership of women and the control of their wishes, desires, and bodies. I am offended by the chopping of Bonia Ahmed's finger as she raises her hand to protect her husband, or shall I say her late husband, from the machetes falling on him for being an atheist. I am offended by the gun pointed at Khalaf Abu Khalaf for admitting what he is, a homosexual and an atheist in Jordan. I am offended by the starving Yemeni children because of their lands are now a playground of settling sectarian scores between Iran and Saudi Arabia. I am deeply offended by the blood of the late Jordanian atheist Nahid Hattar when God permitted bullets went through his body for a Facebook post. I take offense whenever Jews, Muslims, atheists, and Christians are regarded as second-class citizens in countries where one faith calls the shots. And under which Canadian law will my feelings be protected? And would the UK ban entry for those who deeply offended me as they banned the woman who said Allah is gay a few weeks ago? Who's going to ban the hadith that says that I should be put to death? Under what hate speech will my offense be considered dealt with and cared for? And I'm not asking for all of that. And do you really believe that just by having the First Amendment in this country, we will be any different? That this all is just somehow a European or a Canadian problem? We can only glimpse at history to realize that freedom is so dear that it shall be defended at all time and against all threats. That civilization itself can collapse in a matter of years, if not less, and of constant change to the worst. And while we are still looking into history, let's ask ourselves if appeasement and pacifism, even within dialogue itself, resulted in anything other than delaying the ultimate conflict with fascism. I first heard of the term firebrand atheist in David's book and sir I believe that all of us should be and in front of all faiths. It is rare nowadays to see former Muslims platformed even within atheist conferences. And do we have to explain why? We bring controversy wherever we go because we're not white. We cannot be racists. We cannot be the ones who are told if only you read the Quran in Arabic because most of us do dead. We can't be told by the extreme left that we got it all wrong and that they know better because we lived it 24-7. We pose a threat to the We pose a threat to the plans of ending all free discourse. We represent a voice of truth that is so uncomfortable that is getting less and less space to be heard. When moral decisions are on the table, playing nice has never and will never result in anything but the hunger of the second side or the other side that is looking to bring down the values that made that discussion table possible. Once those values are lost, that side shall never be threatened by doubters, critics, or in this case, Islamophobes. So what is the solution for a crisis that still gets casualties as I speak? Well, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure it is not by lighting candles every time a theocrat kills in cold blood a group of cartoonists. 
I'm pretty sure that changing our profile pictures into some flag only to change it into another flag a few months later will ever result in anything. If only we can introduce laws in Canada to silence any criticism of the inhuman acts permitted within Islam, that should bring down the death toll. There must be a line drawn here. A line where multiculturalism etiquette can never go beyond. And that is the laws of this land and the free expression of its people, the freedom to discuss, debate, and even to hate. And don't you ever think that making martyrs of real neo-Nazis is going to ever solve any of your problems. We live in delusional times, ladies and gentlemen. Many are giving in to the manipulative new ways of censorship. People have been saying the lie enough times until it is the truth that it is the Western imperialists or current foreign policies that brought this death cult into the doorsteps of Europe and the US. But it can never be discussed now that maybe there is something to be linked with the jihadist reciting verse after verse to explain why they did it. Maybe there is something to link also to the man who poured oil on his Muslim daughter in Texas a week ago. Maybe there is something to link with the man who shot Khaldun Maddah in Yemen for being an atheist. Maybe it's all linked to one thing in common. But can we state that here and now? And if yes, will we soon be able to? And what is happening to those who are daring to stand up and say we do have a problem with this religion? And it's incompatibility with the values of this part of the world. They are being shut down of the conversation by those who preach to us the game of identity politics. Those who will hold the gates for your enemy, and if not, that enemy is well among you. When your most precious values, which has made this country what it is, is at risk, here lies our duty as atheists to stand for what we are. We may disagree on everything, but at least we share one thing in common. No matter how bitter the taste of the truth is, the truth is only what matters. Right. That our access to knowledge and diverse speech, whatever it brings, it drives our thoughts and brings us to question and improve. We share that our doubts, critique and debate is a fundamental right that we will defend tooth and nail. And we shall state it while we still can. And if that will label us with being militant, firebrand, too harsh, or even Islamophobe, then we will claim back that title. And we shall only say, so goddamn be it. Since I have your attention, <laughs> I have a message from my friend Armin Navabi, the founder of Atheist Republic. Uh, we shared an idea in London of a possible coming out day for all of us uh, worldwide. And we started that on March 23rd, and we plan to execute it on March 23rd of 2019. If you'd like uh, Bruce to play it. How many 
let me play it on my phone and put the mic. <laughs> testing before I speak, maybe? <laughs> if it won't work, let me know. It's okay, forget about it. Right. So the idea of Atheist Day is that we're mostly on social media, if, uh, especially those who are in the Middle East and Islamic majority countries. And we want to create a space for all of us to share at least one day in the year with everybody else. We are thirsty to feel like one of you. Uh, so most people in, in uh, the Islamic majority countries don't even like the term ex-Muslims. We we're, we're thirsty to be called atheists just like you and to be part of this movement. And for that, we created Atheist Day for local communities to create whatever they want. They can do a protest they can celebrate, they can have dinner, they can have a local meetup in a small town. It can, be, it can be organized by an individual. It can also be organized by an organization. Whoever feels that, that he can do it, he can just go to the website atheistday.org and he can apply to become an organizer. You can look up your city. It's fairly new now. We, we still haven't gotten a, a lot of organizers. We will have people in London, Toronto, Illinois, Jordan, and uh, I believe in India, yes. So uh, after a few days, it reached number three, the hashtag on, on, in the UK. It was ranked number three on that day. <coughs> so it was a very successful launch. And we count on all of you and everybody worldwide to make this day happen and to have a day for all of us so we can have fun, protest, stand in solidarity for ex-Muslims and for everybody else who's discriminated against. Thank you. We, have a plan. we want to make March 23rd atheist day. We have a plan. 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 We are announcing it in preparation for us all to join together and celebrate March 23rd, 2019 as the International Day for All Atheists. We are announcing it in preparation for us to join together and celebrate March 23rd, 2019 Every year on this day, atheists and atheist allies from around the world will come together and announce to the world that constant shaming and blaming, demonization and oppression, imprisonment and murder of our fellow atheists needs to end. Take part in our efforts to make the world more friendly towards atheists and lend your voice to us by announcing that you're not ashamed to be an atheist. شارك معنا في إعلانك بأنك ملحد وبأن كونك واحدا منا لا يعيبك. Or if you're not an atheist, share your voice and tell the world that you will stand with your atheist brothers and sisters in their fight against injustice and real discrimination against atheists. When you were not a man, share with us with your voice to express to the world about your ties against your brothers and sisters from the atheists. We have decided to use a green circle as a symbol for our movement. Learn more about its meaning and get updates on the events we are planning next year on atheistday.org. Use the hashtag atheistday to send us your support by posting pictures of yourself with the green circle. Use the hashtag to send us your suggestions for how we can all make this into a movement that helps more atheists feel less isolated or threatened merely for having a different opinion. I'm not sure if I have much time left, but if there's any questions, I will take them. Yeah, uh, I'm not clear. Are you seeking asylum in the United States or in Canada, or, or are, you, are you seeking asylum? Uh, 
Uh, no, I was born in Atlanta, Georgia. You Yeah, they, they helped in, in bringing me here and with all the expenses and everything. It was a, a, a coalition of, of contribution between many organizations, mainly a American atheists did that. And uh, uh, I was born in Atlanta, Georgia, but I lived my whole life in Jordan. Uh, never lived in the US. Um, and when I, uh, funny, that when, I, when I came back here, I landed in Vegas and the FBI came in and they were like, well, your name is Mohammed. Can you speak for a few moments? <laughs> <laughs> I got detained for five hours being questioned about everything from uh, what do I do? Why 25 years and now coming back? What's the problem? I had to look up on YouTube my videos and be like, hey guys, I swear to God, I'm against those people. <laughs> And they're like, what, what does your mother do? What does your father eat? And like, th all kinds of questions. And then they were like, well, are you planning on going on welfare when you go in? And I'm like, I'm a citizen. Why do I get to ask this question? <laughs> then later on to land in Dallas, and these two women came by and looked at me, and they were like, fucking Arab. Like, I have to take racism as well as Islamists and all sides. And like, <laughs> right. But yes, sir, I'm not seeking asylum here. Yeah. Um, so, how safe will that be for um, people that live in countries that will want to kill you mm -hmm. for being an atheist? Yes, thank you for asking that. Uh, in the become an organizer application we have a specific questions for risk countries and we do not post information for our organizers our organizers will only hold the meeting for those who they trust so it will be secretive meetups and for organizers who want to participate in something public they can just wear a green hijab they can wear a green ribbon in their hand and just march, take a picture of them th themselves, be posted on, online on our website and our Facebook and Twitter pages, which will at least help to a degree to the idea of Atheist Day of the people in those countries to feel part of the same movement that is here. Uh, thank you for the speech. I am completely fired up and ready to go out thank and you. get to work. Uh, I'm an activist in Iowa, mm -hmm. and we don't have a lot of Muslims up there, but I recently had the opportunity to speak on behalf of supporting the people that are Muslims mm -hmm. while still thinking that Islam is batshit crazy. Mm -hmm. How do you recommend that somebody in my position bring up the, the, you know, the, the, the idea that Islam is just as crazy as Christianity, which is just as crazy as Scientology? You know, what's the best way to, to get that conversation well, going? Well, first of all, it will be difficult for someone like you as someone who wasn't a Muslim. So what I suggest is studying it more so that you can uh, have a conversation, a decent one. It doesn't have to be offensive. And as people take offense of decent conversations, they need to be integrated more within the values of this country. And uh, if, uh, to have that conversation will be perfectly fine if you have a background that is, that, that is good enough and if it's not, you can at least just stand in solidarity for those who just simply left. And you can may possibly change the minds of those who believe that we should be put to death. And of course, we stand with, with, uh, with our Muslims, brothers and sisters against all forms of racism and the labeling them all as like, you're all, uh, you're, you're considered like, you're just one guy who's like, uh, you're just Osama bin Laden, multiplied one billion times, so of course we stand against it. Islam is, I believe, protected to be the biggest religion in the, before the end of the century. So you being, uh, you be, uh, living in the Middle East and in the West, what are your thoughts or opinions about the future of Western countries with that, if that becomes true? Well, uh, it's not about the numbers. 
See, if, if we look at numbers, the, the Knights of St. John in Malta, there were about 4,000 people, and they stood against 50,000 Ottomans, and they beat it. They kicked their ass. <laughs> uh, it's not about the numbers, and we're not at war with one billion Muslim. That's an idea we should focus on. We are at war with a fascist ideology that is Islam. People are nice. People are nice. The religion is... Oh, and then. So, uh, th with the increase of numbers, I'm not in intimidated by that, but I'm intimidated by the loss of, the, of free inquiry and free expression in the West. And the, 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 the looking at it as, oh, we, we should protect this idea because it belongs to a minority. Well, if you look at it worldwide, it's a very powerful idea. Uh, it has a, quite a lot of money, quite a lot of power in, internationally, but it, sadly in the West, it's looked upon as like it's just this, uh, the privacy of a minority. Like we, we have to respect someone who beats his daughter. We have to respect someone who, who, commit, who commits mutilation to children. And actually, we, we should also ask ourselves a question, is that do we actually, have we actually reached the point where our morality is final and that, that's it and it's absolute? I, 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 I feel that we, we, we don't because I've heard that it's about 50 or 55 percent of, of Americans are circumcised and that's an idea that is so disgusting to me and still is so <laughs> approved of and so normal and so much taken as cultural privacy. Well, why should we uh, respect culture? Maybe, some, maybe sometimes it's, that's something that is overrated. Let's say, fuck that. It's actually just a quick comment. Before you leave, I, I wanted to get in touch with you. Uh, I have two individuals who have reached out to me in the past, and I did not know which direction to turn them to. And I would call them, especially one of them, a very high risk. Uh, he is a high-ranking police officer in Iraq and he was looking to who he could turn to. And, and the other one is a civil contractor in Pakistan. So uh, when you have a chance, I would like to talk to of you. Course we, of course we we'll talk about it. And that's why uh, many organizations, including American Atheists, the Council of Ex-Muslims of Britain, those guys who, who helped me and who helped a lot of people would be very much interested in, in helping those two guys. Thank you. Sorry, and it's not a question, and I got permission real quick. Oh. I just wanted to take a minute to say it is not selfish of you. I understand how you feel, but it's survival, and you came here, and you're doing your part to help them as well. Absolutely. So do not feel selfish. Thank you.